Brian Powell of Iron Far here with Ellie Greenwood before the 2014 Speed Goat 50K. How are you, Ellie? Good. Excited to be here. Excited to have you here and uh, to have you back to racing. I know you've had a couple races this year, but yes. you had a long absence last year. I did, but I kind of feel that I want to go like, okay, that's been and done kind of thing. In terms of like lots of people get injured, right? And I don't want to keep harping on about being injured. But uh, yeah, I was meant to be here last year. I'd signed up, hoped to come, didn't happen. Lots of cancelled races. And uh, yeah, it took quite a while to get back. So it's good to be back. Yeah. And you are back. Yeah. Uh, in March, you uh, had a great run at Chocanut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how did you get like prepared for that from... Um, that was a total surprise, to be honest. Like, I decided fairly last minute, and I hadn't run 50k up to that point. Like, I went out for a 40k trading run two weeks before and thought, okay, I can do it. Um, and I had very, um, like, I went in with what I thought was sensible time goals of really the goal was can I run 50k and run it like to show a certain level of fitness, mm -hmm. but not, I didn't expect, I, I said, look, I should be happy if I get. Four hours 30 and I think I got it was something like 4 11 or something yeah. like that so no that was uh, and that was just really fun to be back and see lots of people and a race you've yeah. done before and so you have yeah, a good way like to compare it, it was my fifth time doing it and so and that was also the thing that I was like I know the course so like if it all started going really wrong I was like I hate to say it, I was like well I can walk it and or, you know and I would know oh I've just got to get to this section and that section and that so kind of thing and comfortable it was comfortable yeah so it was a very sort of like approachable way to uh, come back to do and how did that time compare to your previous four times there um, I think it was probably my second fastest, yeah. which was strange. I mean, it was, to be fair, it was uh, fast weather, like occasionally at Chuck there's a bit of snow up on mm -hmm. the top or it can be muddy and it wasn't that. Like it was like really good conditions for running pretty fast. Um, and there's been a couple of like minor changes. I don't honestly know how much difference that makes. But no, definitely it was uh, it was a good confidence boost to get the time, not just mm -hmm. the, the distance. So, yeah. And then comrades yeah. you've gone for that goal a couple times that gold and you got it yeah i don't think i'd ever i'd never really gone into comrades before thinking i would win like certainly the first time i didn't mm -hmm. the second time i honestly at the start line didn't think i would win but part way through the race i was like okay i'm in contention to win here and and I think that's what made me really want it this time round. I mean, obviously, again, due to injury, missed comrades last year. Um, and so I had this, like, I was so close two years ago that I knew, therefore, I had the ability because I was so close, mm -hmm. right, that I only needed to get that little bit better or something to go a bit, little bit wrong for someone else. And, uh, yeah, so, and it was one that I really really wanted to so win. So how did you, did you know going in you were in better fitness than two years prior? Um, I think I felt more confident on the comrades course like I, I just felt I had more experience mm -hmm. and even the experience of the race two years pr prior where I'd had that experience of being right up at the front and I hate to say it like in comrades it's not like if I'm racing, I don't know, Stephanie Howe or somebody and I'm friendly with her, yeah. like at Comrades, I'm not saying it's unfriendly, but it's a race, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no chit chat, there's no oh well or see you next month at another race. It's like this is race day and this is go for it. So I think the two years before that experience had given me racing experience, mm -hmm. which helped. Um, and yeah, then four weeks before Comrades this year, I did Vancouver Marathon and I purposely held back a little bit. But even so, I ran like a low 243 marathon and I felt great. So I thought, well, if I can feel really pretty good a minute off my marathon PB and like literally I got to the finish line, I was like, I was fine. Do you, like, do you want me to go and run again? Like, that's OK. So that was obviously a confidence boost. And yet, yeah, like doing speed work, which comes into big play at Comrades, like I'd been having good speed workout. So, yeah. But I mean, it was still, yeah, you just don't know. So, yeah. yeah. And then how did it feel when you, you crossed that line in that stadium? Uh, it was amazing. No, it definitely was. Um, like, 
I didn't dare believe, I mean, it was only with about three kilometres to go that I took the lead. And I actually had a terrible race this year. Like, if anyone's read my race report, mm -hmm. then like, everyone said, oh, that was amazing tactics. And I was like, it was not tactics. It was, I was, so when I saw the Nergaleva twins ahead of me, my first reaction was, this is ridiculous that I've had such a terrible race and you telling me I could now possibly win. So those last three kilometres, I was like, it, it, because I really, really wanted to win, I was like, I am going to run as fast as I can. I'm not going to turn around because if they're there, then they'll think, oh, she's looking weak. And I was just like, that could slow me down by a millisecond and a millisecond might be what mm -hmm. it takes. So yeah, it was cool. I came into the stadium and I did kind of look up and look around and go, okay, take this in. You don't have to like enjoy it now, but take it in so you can enjoy it later. And uh, yeah, it was very cool. So you've too. enjoyed it later. Yeah, yeah, no, because I like sort of took a photo in my mind of, um, yeah, like there was a British flag when I was coming in and then there was a Canadian flag. And um, then Ian Sharman was next over the line behind me. Really? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how is that? Like, he's that, coaching you and now you're gonna be working uh, with him? I know. <laughs> it was, um, it was a really, like how this can happen at a race with 16,000 people. So Ian had passed me, which really shouldn't have been the plan with about 20k to go, because of course he was taking it easy um, with Western States coming up. So if everything had gone to plan, I would have always been ahead of Ian, but with 20k to go, he passed me and I was walking. Um, so he's obviously like, oh dear, at least not having the day that she really wanted. And, um, yeah, then I took the lead and then I saw up ahead, I was like, that's Ian up there because I mean, he's quite, well, everyone's quite distinctive if you know their running style. And um, by this point, you're in the lead. So I've got like a cyclist and a motorbike and the lead timing car and five motorbikes behind me. So this entourage is coming. And I thought Ian's going to see the timing clock go past him and he knows comrades and he's going to go, OK, lead woman. And he's going to expect one of the Nergaleva twins. And then I came past. So that was very cool. Did you give him a little um, tap on the butt? No, like I did not turn around. <laughs> I did not look like I was. It was probably about 800 metres to the finish line. It was that close, and um, I was still like, I've not won this thing. Like, I've just got to like, and I was in such a mindset that yes, I knew he was there, and I was kind of taking it in, but I was still like, just run as fast as you can run until you cross that finish line. So yeah. Do you think it was any any advantage to having run it in the same direction without the other one in between, where you had the course in your mind? Um. Yeah. Possibly. Um. I mean, equally then two years passes and however much you think you remember a course, you forget mm -hmm. little bits and whatnot. But I mean, I do feel quite familiar with it. And um, definitely the downhill year, which it was this year and two years ago, uh, that is, I think, to my advantage. So that was also a bit of a confidence booster, although I was still felt I was coming back sort of post-injury. It was like, well, at least I'm coming back to a direction that suits my kind of running. Yeah. So, yeah. And here we are, a month and a half <laughs> later in the Wasatch Mountains. Yeah. Quite a different race. This is a friendly, chatty... Yes, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, this is North American trail ultra running where there's so many people you know, and that's fun, and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come here, so, yeah. I, like, a lot of the people in the American ultra running scene, North American ultra running scene, probably don't have that. They're just at the trail races. Is it nice to have that dichotomy between the super intense you know road ultra and then yeah yeah and um i mean one thing i feel like when i go to comrades and i'm like i'm on a team a south african running team like it's quite all business like you're there to run for the team and they're expecting you to do well and they do understand of course like the realities of things um but it is very much you're on our team because you're on we've chosen you for this year right um whereas come to something like speed go and of course all my sponsors will of course hope that i do well um but i feel there's less of um you know that i don't want to say intense pressure but yeah there are a bit more under understanding that you know you can't do great at every race yeah. and yeah it's if, if your gut goes at 20 miles Topher's not going to give you a call no, tomorrow except, saying well I hope not <laughs> Topher <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, it's people you're more friendly with and you're there as an ambassador mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's a little less sort of 
cutthroat racing, as it were. So, yeah. Uh, but there will be some good racing this weekend. Yes. Casey Edmonds here. Yeah. And Anna Frost, so you've only raced once at uh, the North Face yeah, 50. Yeah, North Face 50. Two years ago? Or, uh, I think it was 2012. It probably was 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she edged you out that time. She did, yes. But yeah. you both had a sort of an off year last year, down year yeah, with yeah. injury and yeah, issues. Yeah. And here you are both at the yeah. top of your game again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you excited to race her? No, definitely. I mean, um, I, it's more Anna's sort of course. I've got to be realistic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, no, but I'm excited to hopefully race her because if I race Anna, then that means I'm having a good race, right? Mm -hmm. That I'm up there with her. Um, I, I honestly, I'm slightly, I don't want to say clueless going into this, but, um, you know, between seven weeks between comrades and this i did have a bit of time to recover i'll be honest like i was pretty beat up after comrades mm -hmm. and then i've done of course like hit the trails right away right um done lots of hiking tried to do like technical stuff lots of elevation so i have totally switched it up mm -hmm. to try and get speed goat specific kind of training in but equally, I'm sure that's what Anna's been doing for, for months, yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, I'd love to be up there with her, but we'll have to see. Nice, and you're feeling good. You're, you are recovered and, and ready yes, to go. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, like, it did take me quite a few weeks to recover, um, but that's fine. And, no, but I feel I've got some, as well as recovering, I had you know good time to get enough training in and it wasn't as if i wasn't fit it was just getting more specific fitness yeah. in for this kind of uh, event so yeah well great to have you back and uh, good luck on saturday thank you so much